We're in the middle of a battle, a spiritual battle. Satan has declared war on the saints. That includes you and me. Now, one of his chief weapons is deception. So how do we recognize and resist his attacks? That's coming up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. Let's take another look at this term, uh, deception. How do you recognize Satan's deception? Because that's what he's attempting to do with all of his lies, uh, fake news, all of the things that people are having to deal with. Uh, there's two ways, and the first one we want to look at is Hebrews chapter 5, and let's begin reading with verse 11. Remember, deception is the first thing that Jesus warns his disciples about. After they said, what's going to be the sign of your coming, the end of the age? He said, be, beware, don't be deceived. Don't let anybody deceive you. Well, deception is Satan's primary weaponry. Look at Hebrews 5. Uh, let's read verses 11 through 14. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when, for the time you have ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one of you that uses milk and is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use, the marginal references, are those that have no experience. They can have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So, one way for you to discern, uh, recognize deception, is to have your senses exercised. Every one of us have experience. Now, experience is not the best teacher. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is your teacher. But anybody can learn, as, as my grandfather used to say, even a mule doesn't step in the same hole twice. So anybody can learn from experience. Just don't look for those experiences as your teacher. <coughs> Rely on the Holy Spirit as your teacher. But have your senses exercised. Think back when you realize you were deceived over something. Uh, look back at an experience that you had. What were the signs that you knew you were being deceived? Think about those things. When were we deceived? How were we deceived? What happened? Um, you know, the people in media have deceived us for years. Some of them have been caught at it. Some of them have been fired. Well, think back on those things. Uh, you certainly want to, don't want to develop an attitude of distrust, but you want to adopt the philosophy of President Ronald Reagan, trust but verify. <laughs> and don't be just, you know, led to the slaughter. Don't just follow any Pied Piper that comes down the road. Check it out and uh, find out for yourself. Form your own opinion. Don't just let anybody uh, lead you down uh, the pathway. It, that's how people get deceived. So the number one uh, exercise is having your senses exercised. Take a look at what happened last time. Where did things go wrong? Look at good. Look at evil. I mentioned this the other day. Here's one area of dece deception. Suggesting evil to bring about that which is good. That's deception. Anytime that you are told or you think you have to do something evil, you, you, don't, you don't gain ground. Let's see, how did I write it? You, you don't gain ground. You don't become more like God by disobeying God. You know, um, 
Adam fell into that trap in the Garden of Eden. And God told him not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but he did anyway. His eyes were opened. He wanted to be like God, but you don't become like God by disobeying God. So exercise your senses. Uh, there are people that are really good at that. We call them street smart, or we call them really sensitive uh, to the way life is or the way things go. Now, the second way is more, how would I say, more accurate, more dependable, but it's harder to obtain because you can just live life and you can say, well, I'm not going to go down that road again. Why? Well, I learned my lesson. That's easy, but it's more difficult, but more accurate to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you by the gift of discerning of spirits. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And let's read beginning with verse 7. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. Now there's the gift. That's a gift given by the Holy Spirit. It's not, it's not the gift of discernment. It's the gift of discerning of spirits. Can you discern what spirit that is? Is that the Spirit of God? Is that the spirit of Antichrist? Is that the spirit of the devil? Uh, let's, if, if I can find it without too much trouble, let's go over to um, First Peter, Second Peter, First Peter. Let's try First Peter. Uh, I get in trouble when I try to find these things that I haven't written down in my notes. Anyway, it talks about how um, you can test the spirits to ask them whether Jesus Christ has come in the flesh or not. But that's that, that requires caution because if you ask spirits if Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, demon spirits will lie. And they know Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. So you haven't accomplished anything. You haven't gained any ground. But if the Holy Spirit, by the gift of discerning of spirits, shows you something, then there's no question about it. It's more accurate. And I've experienced that lots of times. It didn't always line up with what I saw in the natural. I remember one time I was reading that scripture over in Matthew, I believe it is, where it says, and the, the workers of iniquity um, were told by God, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And I read that scripture for years and didn't understand why he rebuked them. They said, we've cast out devils in your name. We've prophesied in your name, etc." cetera. And, and Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And I thought to myself, okay, Lord, I'm going to try to reason this out. Why did you rebuke them and tell them to depart when they said they had cast out devils in your name, they prophesied in your name? So it appears that they were believers. And he said, it's real simple. <laughs> he said, they lied. They lied. They didn't do any of those things. What they said was not true. So have you ever been in a situation like that <clears throat> where you were hearing something, reading something, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, that's not true. That's a lie. That's the gift of discerning of spirits. And we need to learn to develop that and trust that, and you won't be deceived. I know I felt real guilty, and I asked Dr. Lester Summerall about it one time. We were in Israel, uh, and, and Jeannie and Brother Summerall and I were sitting uh, in the lobby after dinner one night on the Sea of Galilee. And we had um, had a friend, a minister friend in Northern California 
who had gotten off into pornography. He lost his family, his church, and he was struggling physically. He eventually died of cancer. And uh, we uh, asked Brother Summerall, why didn't we discern this? Why didn't we see this? We'd, we'd preached in his church. He'd preached in ours. We'd been in his home. He'd been in ours. We, we knew this guy. And why didn't we see this? He said, you probably did. You just didn't want to believe it because he was a friend. You knew him and he was a great preacher. And I said, why didn't we discern this, that he was off into this sexual perversion and the sexual sin and it eventually cost him his life? <clears throat> He said, you probably did discern it, but you didn't want to believe it because he was a friend and a preacher and blah, blah, blah. So sometimes we feel guilty and, and um, ashamed of ourselves for thinking uh, thoughts like that or thinking something like that. So we don't heed what the Holy Spirit's trying to show us. And he and Brother Summerall told us, he said, you probably did discern it. You just didn't want to believe it. So we started really zeroing in and listening to the Holy Spirit when he would talk to us about something. It makes no difference what the outward appearance is, what it looks like. Now, the opposite of that, the ditch on the other side is people that go around accusing people of all kinds of things because they heard a voice or they think this or they think that or they're super spiritual and they start criticizing and uh, demeaning and assaulting the character of someone when it wasn't, that wasn't the truth at all. That's the ditch on the other side. But getting back to the balance, the middle of the road, if you have this gift of discerning of spirits operating in your life, and again, it's not the gift of suspicion. It's not the gift of discernment. It's the gift of discerning of spirits. That's a more accurate way of of determining where there's deception. And I can pretty well see it uh, coming and going now, but I always want to think the best of every person. I don't want to think the worst or accuse them, but when the Holy Spirit, like I was in a church one time getting ready to preach, I'd been invited and I, I just didn't feel right. There was just something not right in the atmosphere there. And uh, I, I, I didn't want to believe what I was feeling, but as I prayed and, and I knew they were getting ready to introduce me and I prayed and I said, Lord, I need, really need your anointing to help me here today. And the Lord said, I'm sorry, I can't help you today. I said, why? He said, because this church was built on lies and deception. Oh, I thought, whoa. And I had to get up and minister in that. And I tell you what, that was the hardest thing I'd ever done up to that point. It was a, a disaster. It was so dry and so stale. There was so, it, it was such a, how would I say, sterile atmosphere. There was no life about it, no spiritual atmosphere whatsoever because of the lies and the deception. And that was the Holy Spirit telling me, the gift of discerning of spirits. You know, Jesus could do no mighty works in some towns because of their unbelief. There are spiritual forces that are working opposed to each other. And sometimes you've got to discern that to know when you're being deceived and, and when it's the gift of discern of spirits, that's more accurate than just having your senses exercised. Uh, let's go on. Um, let's go over to uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 6, and let's look at uh, verses 10 through 14. And this is where we see the identification of these spirits that are working right now, uh, the war on the saints. Um, Ephesians chapter um, 6 and verses 10 through 14. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Those are schemes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're, our, our enemies are not people. We're not warring against people. 
people might have been possessed or oppressed by these demon spirits, but people are not our enemies. It's, that's so important to be able to discern and dis, decide, uh, divide the difference between the person and the spirit. He said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, let me define these categories for you. Uh, I wrote this several years ago, but I have uh, volumes of my, of my teaching notes that I draw from. Um, principalities, if you look this up, principalities mean force dealing with nations and government. Principalities. He says we're dealing with principalities. Forces. These are demon spirits. High-ranking demon spirits. Forces dealing with nations and government. So what do you think you would deal with uh, if you were dealing with the uh, Shah of Iran? If you're dealing uh, with uh, uh, the leader of a Muslim nation, what do you think you're uh, dealing with when you're dealing with uh, communists. Uh, you're dealing with principalities. You're dealing with demon spirits that are controlling through an individual to control a nation or a government. Uh, the, word, the next one is powers. Principalities and powers. Principalities are the highest echelon of Satan's kingdom, then powers. They have authority in all spheres open to them. Um, if, you, if you would find an area of government or finances or uh, whatever that's op open to these demon spirits, an individual that is open to these demon spirits operating through them, those, those would be powers. They are the subordinate of the principalities. Uh, they're like second in command in, in the chain of command. Then rulers of darkness. Now these, uh, I wrote this, governors of darkness, not, not gov governors of state, even though there have been some governors that uh, were demon possessed, I'm sure. Governors of darkness and blinding the world at large. Now, to me, I, I can easily place abortion, gambling, lotteries, casinos, <laughs> medical marijuana. All of these things are come under the heading of rulers of darkness. These are governing spirits over areas of darkness, prostitution, pornography, uh, homosexuality. These are areas of darkness, gambling, casinos, lotteries. Abortion, mar marijuana, drugs. These are areas of darkness and blinding the world at large. I, I watched an interview the other day. I say the other way of the day, a few weeks ago. They were interviewing this one person that just, just bubbling over with absolute glee about the lotteries and casinos that are coming into Arkansas, about how wonderful it's going to be and all the jobs. Blah. They're blinded by this ruler of darkness. They have no idea the criminal element, the darkness that's going to come into our state because of these entities. You go down to Tunica, Mississippi. Well, I, think we, I think VTN reaches into Tunica, Mississippi. We hear from people. You go down there and see how it's affected their town. You go down there and see uh, what's happening uh, to their, their cities and their state. Uh, we were riding motorcycles through the Northwest um, several years ago. Uh, a bunch of friends and I, we needed gasoline. We needed to go to the bathroom, and we could not find a place. And we rode for miles. Finally, we saw this huge edifice coming up out of the, <laughs> out of the countryside. It was a casino. It was huge. And so we thought, oh, good, they'll have a bathroom in here we can use. So we pulled in there. There was a restaurant, blah, blah, blah. 
And I mean to tell you, we made the circle under the portico, getting ready to stop. There were only about, there were uh, two, four, six, eight of us, four, four motorcycles, eight people. And we pulled in there. This was up in Wyoming, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. And we pulled in there. And I'm not exaggerating. My wife can verify it. There were these guys standing there in the portico. They had on black suit coats and they had their hand inside their jacket like this. And when we pulled up and I was the first one in line, he looked at me and he said, don't even think about stopping here. I said, sir, we, we've got to go to the bathroom. He said, move on. He had his hand on a gun. And we all left. We went down the road, found a church. We saw a lady going into a church. She was preparing for a wedding. And said, we all went in there and said, uh, we're all preachers. Can we use your bathroom? And I asked her, I said, what happened to this town? I said, it looks dead. There's nothing here. The casino down there wouldn't let us in there. She said, oh, no. I said, well, what happened to the gas stations and the restaurants? She said, there are none. I said, where'd they all go? She said, they all went out of business. There's not a gas. You have to go, I think she said, 20 miles down the road before you can get a service station. Yeah, nah, everybody that voted for those casinos and lotteries, they're thinking, oh, we're going to get rich. We're going we're gonna to have 300 jobs. We're going to have thousands of millions of dollars coming to the state treasury. <laughs> well, how has that worked out with the lottery? They lied to you about the lottery, didn't they? Told you that it was going to fund education. Less than 20%, only 18% of that money goes to fund tuition for students. Where's the rest of it go? Into the state treasury. And who, and who knows where else it goes? Listen, folks, where there's lots of money, there's lots of power. Where there's lots of power, there's lots of corruption. I mean, this is not a criticism or judgment. It's fact. This is the way it is. Go back and look at history. And so... These rulers of darkness are governors blinding the world at large. Hey, you know, Colorado tried to come down here and tell us, don't do it. <laughs> don't do the lotteries. Don't do the marijuana. Now Colorado is experiencing uh, devastation. They're driving while distracted incidents are up five times what they used to be. Um, you know, now they're sorry that they've done all this. Uh, oh, well, the people wanted, the people this, the people that. Well, where were the Christians? They should have stood up and said, no, we're not going to have this. Go to the voting booth. There's more you than there are them. You should have gone and voted. Okay, let's go to the next one, the lowest category, wicked spirits. These are forces directed at the church. These are wicked spirits. Word wicked means perverted. These are wicked, perverted spirits uh, focused on the church with wiles, fiery darts, and deceiving doctrines. There's some of that going on right now. There are those that have hijacked the grace message and perverted it and are teaching it that anything and everything goes. And this is not the first time that, that, that this has, you know, taken place. Just got a new name. Uh, and it, it, they always have to take something that's real, that's true, and pervert it. Grace is real. Grace is true. Grace is a biblical doctrine. But when you take it and pervert it into lasciviousness, where, you know, hey, it doesn't matter what you do, how you live, it's all covered under grace. That's not true. That's a false statement. You need to find out what grace is. I taught a message some years ago called Five Things Grace Cannot Do, right out of the Bible. So we, we, we need to stop this dumbing down, and we need to stand up and find out what the Bible says. So he said, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Principalities, powers, rulers, wicked spirits. And, you know, I'm not trying to be d disparaging, but the, if you want to find out where all of these demon categories are working the most, most pronounced. Go to Washington, D.C., and you'll see it. You'll see the principalities. It's amazing to me, and I've been to Washington every year for the last 14 years, every July, 
And it's amazing. I've been to the White House twice uh, to, uh, uh, you know, the, the Congress, the Senate, the House. It's amazing that, that the people in the United States keep sending the same senators, the same uh, representatives back to Washington to do the same old thing over and over again. Did you know that the founding fathers never intended for there to be a career politician? Did you know, you know, when we see or hear that somebody's, uh, you know, well, they've served in Congress for 30 years. Well, whose fault is that? They never should have served 30 years. They should have served their two to four years, come home and let somebody else go serve. That's the way the founders designed it. They didn't design, design it for uh, politicians to build a war chest and, and a power base and uh, sit up there in Washington uh, for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. They intended for them to serve two to four years and, and come home and let somebody else serve. And that's perfectly uh, constitutionally all right. If you want to run for Congress, if you want to run for the Arkansas State Legislature or the uh, America the Constitution in, in uh, Washington, D.C., if you want to run for federal office, national office, a local state office, do it. You don't, you don't have to, to run on a platform of uh, what they did was wrong and they're incompetent and they can't do the job. You don't have to, you don't have to criticize, crucify your opponent. All you have to do is say, I'd just like to serve. I'd like to serve in the state legislature. That's the platform you're running on. I'd like to make a difference. I'd like to help. I'd like to give of myself to my state, to my, to my nation. So let's roll all this up. We're not dealing with flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and wicked spirits. So when you begin to see uh, these things come to pass, just remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24. The shootings, I know they're horrible, they're terrible, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't uh, uh, understand, deal with them, do the best we can, but you, you've got to remember it's a hard saying. Jesus said these are the beginning of sorrows. This is what's going to go on prior to the Great Tribulation period. I hope this has helped you understand it. We'll see you on the next Arkansas Live. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching, too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. And follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com.